About two thirds of abortions in Britain are medical rather than surgical. And typically in those cases, women take two pills in the presence of a doctor. But last year, the Scottish government decided to allow doctors to administer the first of those pills to a woman and to give the other to her to self-administer later. Now, in practical terms, that prevents any kind of awkward effect of the termination occurring on a bus home, for example. With abortion such a contentious issue, for some it was perhaps inevitable that the Scottish decision would be legally challenged, and it was, but the challenge failed this afternoon. And that means a woman's own home can be regarded as a permissible class of place for the termination. If it stands, it'll not make a difference uh, to a woman having a medical abortion, uh, and it'll make a difference to a woman having medical abortion and potentially bring the whole issue of abortion law back to prominence. Here's Helen Thomas. The moment I found out I was pregnant, I knew I wanted an abortion. The second pill in the, in the hospital, and you just put it under your tongue, and they say that the process will start within about 30 minutes. For me, it probably started in about 15. We were in a taxi. I was just so focused on getting home, so anxious about what was and could happen in that taxi. Um, and we got home with kind of minutes, minutes to spare. I got into the kitchen and I, I held onto the kitchen counter and I just, I just turned green and I tried to make it through to the bathroom and I, I didn't quite make it onto the toilet. I ended up collapsing on the bathroom floor. Last year, Scotland changed the rules on medical abortion and Wales followed earlier this year. Women were allowed to take the first drug in a clinic or hospital and instead of returning 24 or 48 hours later, they could take the second drug at home. A Scottish judge today upheld that decision and it will add to the pressure for England to change the rules as well. There were about 190,000 abortions in England and Wales last year and 12,000 in Scotland. About 80% of those happened at under 10 weeks gestation, where the Scottish rule change would apply. In comparison, in Scotland in 1968, only 30% of terminations happened before 10 weeks. Medical abortions, taking pills, have become the norm. In England and Wales, 65% of abortions were medically induced last year. In Scotland, it was higher. 84% of abortions were medically rather than surgically induced. For me, to have been able to have taken the pill at home would have been such a different experience, just in that you can kind of sit there in your pyjamas, you can make a cup of tea, you can put something on the television and you can go, OK, right, now I'm going to take it, I'm just going to wait. You know that the bathroom's right next door, you know, you've got your hot water bottle, a blanket, maybe, you know, your friends or whatever sitting with you. And definitely the discovery that women who are miscarrying actually can take it at home, that had a, quite a significant impact on me mentally because it's, so I, I'm being punished because I'm choosing to end my pregnancy. The anti-abortion group in Scotland that brought the challenge has already said it will appeal. The Society for the Protection of Unborn Children said, The abortion pill policy trivialises the terrible ordeal that medical abortion inflicts on women and it can now do so in an environment where women self-administer powerful drugs with no proper medical supervision or support. Most women are sent straight home after taking the second pill. BPAS, the largest abortion provider, offers women in England the option to take both pills together at one appointment. But that comes with slightly lower efficacy than taking the two separately and still leaves women to travel home as the pills take effect. We now know that there is no legal reason not to have the second tablet at home. We already knew that there was no medical reason. We have to start asking questions about you know where the government why the government is not acting and if they don't change to come in line to allow women to take this abortion pill at home i think we would have to assume that either their personal beliefs about abortion or political expediency is getting in the way of women's health the government has said this issue was under review and that it would look closely at the legal proceedings in scotland today's decision means more questions about if and when it might act. Helen Thomas there. Well, I'm joined now from Glasgow, uh, John Deegan, who's the Chief Executive Officer of the 
uh, Society for the Protection of the Unborn Child in Scotland and the group who challenged the decision to allow women to have abortions at home. And then here in the studio is Professor Leslie Regan, the President of the Royal College of Obstetricians and Gynaecologists, who supports women in England uh, being able to have uh, abortions at home. Good evening to you both. Um, Leslie Regan, is this an important legal milestone as far as you're concerned? I think it's a very important step forward because I hope that what we will now see is that our own Secretary of State in England, Matthew Hancock, will follow the example of both Scotland and Wales and allow women the same dignity um, and compassionate care by allowing them to complete uh, the medical abortion in their own home. Right. Um, John Deegan, I know you don't want there to be abortions. If an abortion is going to happen, what is your objection to it uh, happening or the second pill being taken at home as opposed to sitting in the doctor's surgery? Well, in this case, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a, a backward step right to the very beginning where uh, the, the 67 Abortion Act was brought in because apparently of backstreet abortion. And now we have DIY abortions where women are taking an, a, a powerful drug in their own home, unsupervised, with a high rate of complications, with 15% of women hemorrhaging. Uh, America uh, recently re released a report from the FDA saying that there were 22 women who died with the, taking the abortion pill. So it's something that's not good for, uh, for okay. women's health. And, uh, okay, well, no, you've given a very good... You've, given a, you've, you've made a, an argument there. Let's put it to um, Leslie Regan. The medical danger, uh, hemorrhaging, other dangers? Well, we've got good evidence uh, from Scotland. We've got good evidence from France and Sweden that there isn't any increase in medical complications or complications per se when women take abortion pills at home. Um, is it the case you, would, can... you, you, you wouldn't notice the complication anyway probably till the woman had left the the doctor's surgery anyway, would you? I mean, I'm just, is that right? Or would... Yes, similarly, but what we've done, what's been done in Scotland and in other countries where they've introduced this very successfully, is to follow up girls and women who've gone through this procedure and there have not been any increase in complications. And there, there's an increase oh, compared ahead. to surgical abortions, of course. Uh, quite a considerable increase for medical abortions compared to surgical abortions. And some of the studies have shown that 50% of women need um, surgical intervention after taking uh, the abortion pill. So w women are being told that this is safe and simple, and it's simply not true. Uh, it's an embodiment of the principles of health care, which are about preserving health, not inflicting uh, But sorry, you're health. arguing again, you're arguing against medical abortion, but this isn't yeah. an argument about medical abortion. It's an argument about whether the medical it's abortion is two trips to the doctor or it, one trip to the doctor, isn't it's it? About in, it's about encouraging medical abortion and telling wim, women that it's safe and simple, and that's simply not, not the right. case. So are there more medical abortions, Leslie Regan, if you have the provision of being able to finish it at home as opposed to have to stay in the doctor's? Because if, you don't, if, 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 if someone says, I don't want medical abortions, then maybe they're right to say we should make it a bit more difficult to have a medical abortion. There is no evidence to show or to, 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 to um, um, support uh, John Deegan's comment that it increases the number of abortions. Globally, I, I, in, in I, countries where this has been introduced, there is no increase in the number of abortions. But increasing the number of medical abortions? No. No. no, I mean, no, no. The reality is that three quarters of all terminations of pregnancy now in this country are undertaken medically. Right. John Deegan? Well, we've got a terribly high rate of abortion. This is this is the problem. We've taken lots of steps of uh, where we say that contraceptives are available at every stage, and yet we still have a fifth of human beings losing their life in the womb because of abortion. This is a further trivialisation of it. And, and one of the reasons they have to do this is because doctors increasingly find it so distasteful to perform abortions. So the abortion industry are quite happy to push it the burden completely onto women so the woman now is taking the full burden she has to go through the abortion at home and one of the consequences that Leslie I would like you to look at are the emotional and psychological impact that abortion has in women uh, the other dimension that we would like people to look at is the coercion if you can say to women this is a simple and safe thing for you to do it's very easy for others when there's a, an inconvenient pregnancy, to put the pressure on the woman but, for her to go forward for an abortion. So you, but you made a lot of points there, but I, I, again, I, I, John Deegan, aren't you relitigating an argument about abortion? And uh, basically, you're just saying you want abortion to be inconvenient rather than convenient, or you want it to be horrible, surgical and unpleasant rather than quick. No, and, I'm, isn't I'm, that really I'm what, saying... Isn't that I'm, just a summary of your argument there? 
I'm, abortion is unpleasant. I mean, we heard that the woman in your package said that it was a very unpleasant experience. What I'm saying is you're pushing more women to go through that experience. We're trivialising it, telling them it's safe and simple. When we have a 50% complication rate, we have 15% of women having heavy hemorrhaging. This is not this something is safe and simple. Right. So that, that is the, the essence of it, isn't it? You, you've made it sound all much simpler and more convenient than it really is. Leslie Regan. Well, the evidence is quite clear and the evidence does not support John's point. There aren't increase in number of complications following the administration of medical abortion or the tablets that uh, in enact the abortion. And most women would much rather have a medical abortion yes, than a surgical and I would abortion, disagree with which the is why they do have them, presumably. Yes, exactly. And I think that it's important that we understand that women need to be offered choices and they need to be um, offered compassionate care, um, dignified care, and that this is what their choice is if they are going to undergo okay. an abortion. We'll leave it there. Thank you both very much indeed. Thank you.